Welcome to part two of my review of Leaving Neverland. Or should I say bullshit land? Because that's what the documentary is. Bullshit. This is my real review. Part one was just a mock review. With the exception of the red card that I gave it. And the one positive that I actually gave the documentary. I said that the archival footage wasn't cropped. That's the only positive that I gave the documentary. My real review will be all negatives. And since Wade Robson wants to change his statements and saying that he was molested and he wants you to pretend that his original statement wasn't true, I can do that too, motherfucker. You want to change your statements? I decided to change my review. Part one wasn't my actual review. This is part two. And since the documentary was in two parts, this is in two parts. Except part two is my real review. You're going to know my real feelings and you're really going to know how I feel about the documentary. So I'm going to begin right now. Let's rip this motherfucking shit documentary up. Sexual. Leaving Neverland is about two former friends of Michael Jackson, Wade Robson and James Safechuck, that decided to do the documentary after losing their court cases. It aired on HBO in two days, two hours each for a total of four hours. Four fucking hours of torture. The problems start right away with what was included in the documentary. The director, Dan Reed, included unnecessary scenes just to pad Leaving Neverland into a four-part mess. We may not have Michael Jackson on the program. Because it was a big... Safe track. The other problem I had with this fucker is the lack of people interviewed for Leaving Neverland. Dan Reed decided to only include the families of Wade Robson and James Safechuck for witnesses. And they don't even back up Wade and James's claims. And those people that he's hurt should have a chance to talk about it. And they should be allowed to be okay. He was a pedophile. You know, the word says it all. Pedophile. They only talked about how life was with both Wade and James, how Michael Jackson affected their lives, and how Michael Jackson destroyed their son's lives. All were word of mouth and didn't really have any weight to them. These people were only put in for you to believe what Wade and James were saying about the abuse. Even though they were put in the documentary, it didn't change my mind whether or not Michael Jackson was guilty of molesting Wade and James. It didn't work. I still didn't believe them. Leaving Neverland even had problems with pacing. I got so bored when they talked about the 2005 case that I almost shut the documentary off. Both parts were too fucking long and showed nothing that interesting. It was like, true story, abuse, true story, abuse, true story, abuse, over and over again. Now for the worst. The accusers did not show any emotion when talking about their abuse. He also had a like an Indian fort with teepees, have snacks and then have sexual relations there. There was also a game room and then upstairs in the arcade there was a, another room. We would go into that room and have sex there. 
there's this attic, there's a third floor attic. So we would go in there and have sex. James Safechuck kept saying that Michael banged him in quite a bit of places around Neverland Ranch. I didn't believe that for one second. When you have sex, even if it's in movies, it's mostly in one location. You don't fucking go to multiple places in the same building to have sex, fuckhead. And I remember Some of James Safechuck's sex stories made no sense, so including when he talked about masturbation. Once he talked about that, which was the first sex story he talked about, he lost all credibility with me. And I remember my penis swelling up because I did it so much that first time. I must have done <laughs> Must have done it a few times. And so I remember dipping my penis in warm water. Michael filled the cup up with water so I could pee. It was hard to pee. I don't have any unpleasant memories other than not being able to pee. You first masturbated at age 10 before you hit puberty? It usually doesn't happen until after you hit puberty and after learning about sexual education in school. Even Wade Robson wasn't believable, also showing no motion when talking about his abuse. And going down and starting to, you know, perform oral sex. He only showed emotion when he talked about his dad killing himself due to bipolar disorder. I don't know, I feel like I just started stitching myself up again already. It's always sad when a dad dies. But he should have been sad when talking about the abuse. And I was just kind of on display. And then um, periodically through that, he would kind of come up and, um, and stick his tongue in, in my anus. I didn't believe that either. It sounded like he was making it up. However, there were a couple of times where I can tell their sex stories and signs of abuse are fake. Both were pausing when talking about sex at certain locations where the abuse happened. It felt like a chore for them to make up these sex stories. That was also the reason why I stopped believing Wade and James. Also, their timeline for the effects of abuse made no sense. They say it took them over 20 fucking years to feel the effects of abuse. What began to happen was just this emotional, like, upheaval that was just all of these anger and sadness and... You know, back and forth, all over the place, unpredictable. I mean, just coming out of me constantly. That's not how it works with abuse. The effects of abuse comes immediately after it happens. It doesn't take 20 fucking years for you to feel the effects of abuse. The effects of abuse comes immediately. And I know this because I had a former girlfriend that I think got abused. She suffers from delusions and other signs of possible abuse. Plus, there was nothing to point out abuse. Because when you do get abused, there are signs of it through evidence. Most of the time when it comes to abuse, you either call the police, have photographs taken, or have an examination done by a doctor. There was none of that in Leaving Neverland. Fuck. There is no evidence that supports Wade Robson and James Safechuck at all. I remember Wade Robson losing a case against the Michael Jackson estate in 2017. I talked about it in my 2017 Year in Review. On December 20th, Wade Robson lost his lawsuit against the Michael Jackson estate after it was dropped due to Wade lying about Michael Jackson sexually molesting him as a child. Wade 
filed it back in 2015 and all he wanted from the case is money. I didn't know that James Safechuck sued the Michael Jackson estate and lost until this year. Those court cases prove my point about this documentary. Leaving Neverland was done for money. I remember when Jackson got accused of sexual molestation in the 90s and 2000s. I didn't believe any of it. And I'm glad that I didn't. He never should have gotten accused of any crime in the 90s and the 2000s. And even now, with this documentary airing on HBO, Wade Robson and James Safechuck are the equivalent of Evan Chandler, who tried to get Michael Jackson's money and won through a settlement. Wade Robson and James Safechuck are trying to do the exact same thing that Evan Chandler did. Wade Robson and James Safechuck just wanted to take advantage of Michael Jackson after he died by suing the Michael Jackson estate with the same child molestation claims that other accusers have used against Michael Jackson. Now I know why Michael Jackson died. It was because of the backstabbers and money grabbers that falsely accused him of child molestation and didn't care about his kindness. Leaving Neverland is an example of a get-rich-quick scheme by the accusers. As a result, I am more of a Michael Jackson fan now than I ever was. This documentary did nothing to change my mind. My and this is the worst camera. documentary I have ever watched in Jackson my life. Shot. As for the people that watched this documentary and enjoyed it, you were brainwashed. There should have been no way for you to believe this shit. Wade Robson and James Savechuck are con men. They just wanted money from Michael Jackson, didn't get any, and that is why they did this documentary. Dan Reed should have did a better documentary, but to real victims. Jarrett Fogel was a pedophile. His victims should have been talked about, instead of the two liars in Leaving Neverland. James Safechuck and Wade Robson are backstabbers and money grabbers. I might have been falsely accused of sexual harassment twice in my life, but that's nothing compared to the false accusations against Michael Jackson. Jarrett Fogle was much worse than Michael Jackson and me combined. He got convicted and sent to prison. Why isn't his victims being talked about in a documentary, Dan Reed? Those are real victims. Not the ones that you put in this shit documentary. Your documentary is a fucking joke. Get real victims and stop supporting these backstabbers and money grabbers of Michael Jackson. Leaving Neverland gets a red card. As a matter of fact, this has now taken the top spot for the worst Michael Jackson related media, audio and video wise, ever. My original number one was Blood on the Dance Floor 2017, which I put as the worst Michael Jackson related media for 2017. And at the time, that was the worst. But since this only has one positive over Blood on the Dance Floor 2017, there were a couple of positives with Blood on the Dance Floor 2017. But it really didn't have any real deemable qualities at all. But Leaving Neverland is even worse. And as a result, 
Leaving Neverland has taken the top spot away from Blood on the Dance Floor 2017. Now part one was entirely a joke. I was joking the entire time that I was giving Leaving Neverland praise. Since Wade Robson and James Safechuck want to backstab Michael Jackson fans, backstab the people, brainwash people, I decided to do the same thing with part one and backstab every single person that thought that I was giving the movie praise and give my real review for part two. Since Wade Robson and Jabe Sabechuck want to do the same thing with their statements and backstab people and believe that their abuse was true. And I also showed no emotion when I did my mock review since James and Wade decided to do the same thing when talking about their abuse. I can play that game too. I just can't believe why is this documentary getting praise. Almost 7.0 on IMDb. A standing ovation at Sundance. Critics giving it positive reviews. Give me a fucking break. This documentary deserves Razzie nominations. This is the worst documentary ever made. This definitely does not deserve the praise at all by anybody. I don't support this documentary and I don't support the things that occurred after the airing of Leaving Neverland. Removing a statue of Michael Jackson? Pulling one Simpsons episode that had Michael Jackson as one of the voices? Pulling his music from radio stations? Why are you falling for this shit? The accusers were not believable at all. They sounded like they were making it up as they went along. They were emotionless when they talked about their alleged abuse. And there were no facts or evidence to prove that the accusations were true. The creators of The Simpsons overreacted after they watched the documentary and pulled the first episode of season three from circulation. I can't believe they decided to believe the accusers in leaving Neverland. I did a petition as a result of this. The creators of The Simpsons need to reconsider their decision of pulling the episode. They are not hurting Michael Jackson or his fans. They are hurting Simpsons fans. Hell, all the decisions that aired after the documentary should be reconsidered. The removal of the MJ statue and the removal of Michael Jackson's music from radio stations. You all got brainwashed by this shit and you should reconsider your decisions. The accusers in this documentary, I didn't believe after they opened their mouths about the abuse. People that think Michael Jackson is a pedophile need to move on. The accusers need to go fuck themselves. And Dan Reed needs to make a better fucking documentary about child and sexual abuse. And not this shit documentary. Don't get me started on After Neverland. That also fucking sucked. The only thing I praise in that shit of a program is the victims in the crowd. Those are real victims. James Safechuck and Wade Robson never will be victims. Both Living Neverland and After Neverland get red cards. Fuck both programs. If you are interested in more Michael Jackson videos, please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications on new videos. This has been a special Moonwalker Mondays episode. And I'm not done with Leaving Neverland. There will be more to come. Later. Money. He's home.
homosexual. As for the message at the end of both parts of the documentary, I will support this. If you have been abused, sexual or not, and you are a child, or if you know about a child that has been abused or sexually abused, please call the number on your screen or go online and talk about it. That will help put shit-stained pedophiles like Jarrett Fogle behind bars. Thank you for watching.